Useless. Useless. Oh, so very useless. This project might be useless, but you're not. Polygon Division. Useless projects. Projects. How's it going, PD team? That's a funny intro. Anyways, the theme of this series that I just created is creating useless, fun stuff inside of Cinema 4D. Now, I'm not saying that this project or the pro future projects can't be used for client stuff, but that's not the goal. This project is inspired by a desktop pendulum that my uncle had in his living room. It looked like this. It had a little dish of sand and you pull back the pendulum weight and it swings from a fulcrum that's about two feet high so it's rather large and due to the shift and spinning of the earth you get these flower patterns that happen and it never spins in the exact same way every time due to conservation of energy it creates these really cool results well I thought to myself why not try to create one of these in cinema 4d and surprisingly it's very easy and only takes a few seconds to set up so let's dive in okay so here we are in a blank project and I've got a cone here that I brought down to negative 500 and then a bar that's a thousand units centimeters high and I turned on the snapping and changed it to work plane snap and I put a null up at the top the bar and then the cone and so what we're gonna first do is we're gonna set this up properly so I'm gonna take I'm gonna drag the wire into the weight and the reason I'm doing that is because when we add the physics we want the center point to be down here so the weight of it will swing like this and then are gonna drag our weight into the pendulum here and that's just a null with the visibility set to sphere and 26 centimeters and what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click and say apply bullet tags rigid body if I play this it just falls and because they're intersecting it explodes so to fix that what we're gonna do is we're gonna change on the on the weight the tag for collision you can see it's saying apply tag to children we do have children we do not want this tag to apply to the children but what we do want is we want the compound collision shape so to treat it as one shape and we can leave the shape set to automatic if you get weird results like you have intersections or any kind of objects that you want to intersect with this you would set it to moving mesh but that doesn't apply to us I'm going to drag the friction the bounce and the noise to zero we're also going to take the linear dampening and bring that down to zero as well because we want this to uh, animate infinitely but we're going to be experimenting with adding a little bit of drag into the animation here so next what we're going to do I'm going to go back here and we're going to add a connector. So we're going to go to simulate connectors. And these are basically just presets of the same thing. One we want is the spherical, which is basically a ball joint. If you've ever seen one on a car, it's a ball and socket like your hip. And we'll take that and we're going to have with snapping turned on. I'm just going to drag it up to snap with the null object. This is where the fulcrum is going to be. So I'm going to take the connector and drag it inside the pendulum here. And now to get this connector to work, I'm going to delete this here because it automatically added it in. We're going to drag our weight in like so. And when you do this, you're going to see the blue anchor line coming down. So it's calculating the end point based off of the weight center point. So the connector should have a ball and socket up at the top. And then this, the fulcrum end point should be at the cone. So now what we can do is we can take this and swing it using the pendulum null, hit play, and there we go. So I'm going to extend my timeline out to 10,000. So now we have an infinite pendulum. So there is no friction. So this is actually going to animate to the same spot. If I take my cursor and put it here, when it comes back around, it'll be in the same exact spot. So we have an infinite loop here. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to speed up the animation so we don't have to sit here and wait for it to animate slowly. So I'm going to do control or command D and I'm going to increase the time scale to 300. And now it goes quicker like so. And what we want to do is we want there to be a null object at the end point because we're going to trace it. So what we'll do is we'll go here and we'll add a null object and I'll call this point and I'll add it in the group here and we'll zero out the properties here and then I'll drag it down to the end and it snaps so you can see it snapped to the end point there we go so this should be a negative a thousand and then we just drag it down to the point there we go so let's go ahead and set up with this point selected the null object I like having the visibility of it set to sphere and we can make it red by going to material and changing it to custom set it to red something like that so there's the point and then we'll have have that selected and we're going to go to our MoGraph tools and set up a tracer and what we're going to need is we're going to set this to adaptive and we're going to set this to B spline so that we get interpolation our point needs to go inside here and now we're tracing so you can see it's exactly the same every time
time. So what we're going to do to get this to kind of arch is we're going to use custom initial velocities. I'll pause this. I'm going to go to dynamics, custom initial velocity, and we're not going to use position. We're going to use rotation. So I'm going to go ahead and crank this up a little bit. And now you can see we get a shape and this is going to fall back into itself. So let's speed this up. So command or control D and I'm going to do 500. And if this was to continue along, it's going to land in the same exact spot. So that's where our forces tab comes into play. We're going to go ahead and take our drag and put 0 0.0. Let's do 0 0.1. And you can see if I go to the top view, it's now decaying with 0 0.01. And in my example, I went as low as 0 0.05. And there we go. So you can play with this value. You can also play with under the dynamics, play with this value. We could also add a little bit into this direction. You can crank this up to get more oblong shapes. So you can see I push it out further. It makes a more oblong egg shape. Bring these down. And that's essentially it. Now, what we can do to make this slightly more realistic is add a gravity field that rotates. And so the way you set that up to create variation because of the spin of the earth is we're going to go up here to MoGraph vector. We're going to go to simulate forces, gravity, and we go in here to the forces tab and we're going to drag in our gravity in the include. And the reason I'm doing this is because we're going to add particles and whatnot. And I, I like add, actually locking these in in case we do any other dynamic objects. And then what we can do is we change this to force and you can see it's pulling it down really hard. So it, it changed the shape. What we're going to do is we're going to just set this to one unit and then we can take this and we can rotate it. There we go. So now it's slightly affecting. And then what we can do is we can take and add a null object. And with this null object, we can um, animate its heading. This right here will pull it slightly in a different direction. I'll go to the first frame here, add a keyframe for heading, go to the last frame and type in 360. And we also want to go to our keyframes and set this to linear. So you just select the linear, close the keyframes. And now this is slowly spinning in an angle. And what you can do is you can experiment with this angle as well. So we can increase it to create a different shape. We can also increase the value, something like five. You want to keep it super minimal. You saw it kind of jumped here. So you can see we're affecting it like this. So what's going to happen is it's going to change its shape depending on the rotation and the position that it's uh, swinging back and forth from. So you'll get more like flower like patterns by doing this. And this is just simulating the spin of the earth. Now, let's say we want to add particles because we want to do a sand feature. So my initial example, if I go back, I can turn off the tracer does an emitter as well. So you can see here's particles being emitted. And when you crank up the speed of the time scale. It gets a little geometric here in the pattern. So to fix that, you're going to need to go to your settings, go to expert and just increase the steps per frame to be a little bit more to fix that. I'm going to leave it here like that, but that gives you an idea. Now the downside is if I move the camera, it will skip particles when you move them in the viewport. You can see it's jumping, but there you go. There's particles. So let's set this up and there's an issue that you're going to run into. So I'm going to show you how to fix it. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a emitter. So I'll come in here here to my simulate emitters, basic emitter. And what we want to do is we want to have them from a point. So I'm going to set this to zero, zero. We also want a constant value. I'm going to set it to something like 50. And then the properties we're going to bring down to zero. I like setting these to white. And then we're going to take the particle and we can just drag it inside the point here and zero out the position. So now if I play this, let's disable the tracer. You can see we run into an issue because the gravity is affecting it. So to fix that, our basic emitter is being thrown into a a particle group. Well, what we can do is we can create a dummy particle group. So I'll go to simulate groups, particle groups, and I'll call this gravity. And we can take our gravity in here and just drag it inside so it won't affect that particle group. And there you go. And now you can just come in here to the emitter and crank up the emission amount, set it to per frame. And I think a hundred. Let's try. You want to do less so your computer doesn't slow down. So I think I set it to something like 50. And there you go. There's the particle effect as well. And you can create a controller for this where it goes into these tags and adjusts the drag amount, how much push it has under the dynamics. So you can increase this to something like 1500 to get a different shape. Now, when you get a big scene with tons of particles, it can slow down towards the end. So I'm going to just disable that and use the tracer. And remember the tracer object, you can put a spline and trace the spline. And there you go. That's it for this useless project. I hope you have some fun with this and experiment around. Thanks so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on more content. Thanks for your support.